Um, so what you mentioned before, uh, CBS has rejected an ad from a gay dating site called Man Crunch, telling the site that it is not within the network broadcast the network's broadcast standards for Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, this is a statement released by CBS. After reviewing the ad, which is entirely commercial in nature, our standards and practices department decided not to accept this particular spot. As always, we are open to working with the client on alternate submissions. Hibbard reports that CBS believed Man Crunch was trying to generate free publicity by submitting an ad that was likely to be rejected. Just the clips I saw looked yeah, funny. What, what I mean, like? it was you know, like they have little pictures of it there well, up in the corner. <laughs> no, I don't think it's live. But I mean, you can see it's like the two guys are sitting there watching the game, and if I remember right, they both reach for the popcorn or something. Their hands touch. Yeah. I mean, it was it was hysterical. It was obviously it's done with like a lot of cute humor little and mini romantic comedy. But it was the same dudes. kind of humor you would expect from any Super Bowl ad. That's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, that's pretty funny. But all right, I don't know. Um, that's that's just not the only. Ad they've rejected though. In fact, there were two rejected ads in 2004. Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is from January 16, 2004. U.S. football fans will not see ads featuring scantily clad vegetarians or a political attack on President Bush during Friday, February Super Bowl after CBS said on Thursday that advocacy advertisements were out of bounds on professional football's biggest day. The network over the years has rejected dozens of advertising proposals by advocacy groups who argued that, that the network only airs controversial messages that it agrees with. So Apparently so, they yeah. Rejected, uh, they rejected an ad by PETA, right. uh, and they also rejected an ad by MoveOn.org uh, yeah. right in the middle of you know the election year where uh, Bush beat Kerry. So, uh, huh. Yeah. All right, I'm done with that. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that was worth bringing up, especially yeah. today. Right. So, um, I, I guess the second ad that airs will is still yet to come. Uh, but you guys should not watch it. You should watch this show, and then you should catch the ad on the internet. Um, right, and and like watch it, watch like a pirated version on YouTube, so that you don't generate any advertising dollars out. Of it. Uh, okay. Wasn't there like a segue? Oh, uh, and that <laughs> reminds me about how terrible those. Christian hymns are. Was, oh my God. No, there was like so a, bad at this. I can't remember what it was. You did some segue earlier, and I was like, you should use that during the show. Mm. Um, anyway, yeah, today we're talking about hymns. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because when I did uh, the last show, I had mentioned some children's hymns. Mm -hmm. And some of the feedback that I got was people that were surprised mm -hmm. that children were um, asked to sing these songs in churches. And some of the things that I've become more interested in is uh, the, the context of speaking to other atheists who were raised fundamentalists versus atheists who weren't. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to them sometimes about what's going on. And it's, it's, there's sort of an interesting aspect to it where I think that, um, and, and this is a broad generalization, and I realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, but just to say, in, on a very general level, superficial level, I find that there's a lot of understanding regarding the doctrine. Like, there's no lack of understanding that, okay, this is the doctrine that is taught there. But there is sometimes um, a lack of, I think, grasp of the, the sort of total experience of the fundamentalist upbringing and what it means to be in that church and in those services and in that family and surrounded by that community that... Uh, and, I, and I find this a lot because people who have deconverted will often say, oh, I totally understand how you know, messed up this can make you and how you believe these things. But then there's other people that haven't gone through the experience and they just say, well, I can't understand how somebody could believe such a thing. How could, you know, how could a reasonable person think this? Or I have a friend that's really smart and you know, they understand uh, you know, these particular aspects of the sciences, but when they start to talk about their religion, it's just sort of out the window and, and their reason, reasoning skills 
just don't seem to apply, and I don't understand why that occurs. But when you're raised fundamentalist, you, your reaction is, oh, I understand how that occurs, because yeah, I used to think I've the same way. I've already mentioned that uh, I probably won't relate to this topic at all. I mean, uh, I was raised in an uh, atheist, um, uh, nominally Jewish family, uh, so I went to Jewish summer camp, but, but like, you know, all full of very, very reformed Jews, which <laughs> right. means, you know, barely Jews. Right. Um, and, uh, but I do see these emails all the time uh, saying, you know, I don't understand how, like, Matt could have been a right. Christian for so right. long, you know, because it seems like only dumb people right. know, believe that stuff. And right. I don't know. I hang. I must hang out with a lot more ex-Christians and even current Christians than they do because I don't think that you have to be in any way dumb right. to. Uh, I think to some find this some people have like. even written in and said you've got to have a chemical imbalance going on. There's got. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that more than once. And I, you know, it's like no, you don't need a chemical imbalance. You just need to be indoctrinated successfully right. in order for this to take. And I've got I've got date eyebrows right now. Um, what is? That? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh, date on your head. Um, okay. Sorry. It's so, a um, gag. But, but, but there were a lot of people that were shocked uh, at some of the children's song lyrics, and I was glad. I think at that point that Matt was on the show because he was saying, "I remember these songs." Mm -hmm. You know, and he said, "I remember these, and I must have sung them when I was, you know, four years old or about." And one of the things that he mentioned was, I don't remember much else about the time I was four years old, but these songs I remember to this day. Yeah, and that just goes to show it works. It does work. It drills it in. Um, what's really interesting, though, is that there's another experience that people that are raised fundamentalists often have or express between themselves, uh, and that is that when you get away from the fundamentalist reading of the Bible, you sometimes we'll go back to read something and then you say wow that is so different than what i remember reading that's not the story that i recall and you start to realize how much of what you read was impacted by what you were told you were reading instead of what you were actually reading yeah i mean like i i don't know i so i'm i i don't go to church uh, but i have been like a chorus singer since high school and I get, you know, I, I got my first exposure to a lot of songs that are like, you know, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? <laughs> right. Uh, that I guess must have seemed kind of normal to a lot of people. But I was, I was like, wow, they're washing in blood? <laughs> right. Um, it, it just struck me as kind of off. And... Um, I mean, I realize, you know, I know people who've been to Sunday school as kids, and right. it seems to me like they mostly get just the nice stories of the Bible. I mean, you know, they get like, um, I mean, or I've seen kids' books that have like Noah's Ark on it, and they have the fluffy little animals coming up the ark, right. uh, and they have like the rainbow at the end. And they kind of gloss over the whole billions of people I, being drowned. I mean, I can promise you that the children are taught that, that, that the world was destroyed, that people were wicked and they were killed. It's yeah. just that, the, like you're saying, the focus of the story is God loved Abraham and his family, and he mm -hmm. saved them from the horrible flood. Right. So, I mean, it seems like they slip in the nasty parts. I mean, like, they do include them, but they, so, but they sort of... No, they they're normalize sort of, it. They're, they're sort of normalized. out of focus in the background of the camera. It's so just a, it's, it's presented as normalized. Mm -hmm. You know, God needed to destroy the world because everyone was wicked. Yeah. And, but Abraham was good. Right. And so he wanted to save Abraham, and he wanted to save the animals. Yes, exactly. And so, so the the story that you remember, like as a Christian, when you're when you're defending this story, you're defending it as a righteous story of right. God's righteousness, and these people deserve to die, and these animals deserve to die, and these children deserve to die. Everybody deserved to die, except right. Abraham. Like, like the whole thing about Abraham's son. Now that you bring him up, I always bring that up because it's so weird to me that that's supposed to be like a story about how. It, if God tells you to kill your son, it's a good idea to intend to do it, even if God's going to stop you later. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's it was a, you know, it was virtuous of Abraham to be willing to do that. Right, and to not question it. Right. That's the main thing. He didn't question. He, that's why later in Hebrews he's listed as a man of great faith because right. he was willing to do whatever he was asked, including killing his own child, if that's what it took. Yeah. The fact that it was halted is sort of weirdly significant, I think, to the Christian mindset. Mm -hmm. That it's like, oh, but you don't understand, he, he stopped it. 
Right. And it's like, okay, do you understand what you're advocating here? Like, it doesn't really, the, the stopping it section is so minor compared to what you just advocated. Mm -hmm. The message of the story seems to be that faith is good for yes. them. Yes, yeah. 